Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. The 121st day of the war in Ukraine. Russians continue their offensive in Donbass. In the face of the massive attacks on Severodonetsk that had been going on for nearly two months, Ukrainian defenders decided to withdraw from the city. However, Kiev denied reports that a similar step was to be taken in relation to nearby Lysychansk. The command of the Ukrainian armed forces decided to refrain from further defense of the city of Severodonetsk, which had been stormed by the Russians for over a month and a half. For the time being, there is no question of the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from Lysychansk. The soldiers of the armed forces and the National Guard have already received an order to move to new fortified positions and to fight there effectively and inflict losses on the enemy. It makes no sense to defend those positions that have been destroyed in recent months, because the number of the dead will increase every day. The situation in southern Ukraine remains tense. The Russians are trying to keep their positions and continue the tactic of chaotic firing. The towns of Beresnukhvata and Voskresensk were fired upon. One person was injured. A fire broke out in the dried meadows and fields with grain, but it was quickly extinguished. During the night, the Russians attacked the port in Otakiv again with rockets. There were no casualties. In Mykolaiv, the port and industrial infrastructure, as well as residential areas, were bombed again. Two schools were completely destroyed. Information warfare also plays an important role in contemporary conflicts. Unconfirmed Confirmed or even false information is often disseminated to confuse the enemy, lower morale or intimidate the population. The situation in the oblast is under control. Information about the outbreaks that appeared on social networks we do not confirm. Remember not to spread unverified news. Only the military administration confirms it. That night, Russian troops fired on Hulaipola and the suburbs of Zaporizhia. Near Kriviri, the apostolic city was fired upon by forbidding cluster weapons. Infrastructure was damaged, gas, water and high voltage lines. Two civilians were seriously injured due to careless handling of the misfires. Please do not touch any unknown objects. They are deadly. Seven people have already died in our region alone because of this ignorance. So far, sappers have neutralized 72 misfires, but have only checked half of the city so far. In order to strengthen Kiev's defense on the Dnieper River, at the initiative of the Land Forces Command, a riverboat division was formed. It will provide support for the land forces in the northern section of the Dnieper River and its tributaries. The squadron is currently under the control of the Kiev Defense Forces. There are war scenarios that we must consider. In the near term, a riverboat flotilla with troops located in various places must be built on the Dnieper, supported by landing units. We also do not forget about the estuaries of the Danube, Nister, and Bo. Active combat operations are taking place there now. Exactly four months ago, the Russians launched an unprovoked barbaric invasion of Ukraine. These four months have shown that we are capable of jointly defending our country and our freedom. I would like to thank, first of all, our armed forces, all armed formations and volunteers for uniting and proving, first of all, to themselves and to the whole world that we can resist such powerful aggression. Today we remember the fallen soldiers, children, mothers, sons and daughters, all the relatives and loved ones that we lost during this time. Unfortunately, in the opinion of many experts and politicians, the war in Ukraine will not end soon. According to the advisors of President Zelensky, military action may take many months and will not stop even after the end of the current offensive in Donbass. In turn, NATO experts assume the Ukrainians have been fighting for many years for freedom and the West cannot stop supporting them, even if the costs are high. During the second day of the summit in Brussels, EU leaders discussed issues related to the economic crisis, as well as the issue of the community's energy security. However, the most important event of the summit was the unanimous decision on granting Ukraine and Moldova the status of a candidate to the European Union. Poland Daily's Aleksandr Wierzejski was there on site. It took only five hours for EU countries' leaders to agree to the candidates, to granting candidacy to Ukraine. And given that Ukraine uh, applied for the status only after the Russia's aggression, this marks a record-breaking time uh, for such a procedure. For tiny Ukraine, it's extremely important because only several weeks ago, Vladimir Putin stated that there is no such a thing like 
Ukrainian nation, let alone Ukrainian statesmanship. Therefore, now he is proven wrong. For Poland, this decision has been a great diplomatic success because President Andrzej Duda and Prime Minister uh, Mateusz Morawiecki for weeks raided the uh, capitals of Europe, uh, stating that the EU should adopt the standard measures to adoption Ukraine and Moldova, not some proposed by, for example, France, uh, union of values. And also for Ukraine, for perspective reconstruction of this country, the membership uh, allows uh, the country to use vast financial resources that are granted because of the huge European Union that you market that uh, Ukraine will be part of. Finally, Moldova, tiny country threatened by Russia, is now supported by the great huge mechanism of the European Union, which also should cool the attempts of uh, Vladimir Putin to seize that country. Another big issue uh, this time is inflation rate, also uh, manipulated by Russia, by artificial gas crisis that follows with the oil crisis and coal. And time to solve this is really shrinking as we speak. Poland Daily, Alexander Wierzejski, Brussels. Granting Ukraine and Moldova the status of a candidate to the European Union does not mean a quick prospect of becoming an EU member. The Polish accession be process began in 1994 and lasted 10 years. It was determined not only by political considerations, but also by conditions that had to be met by the aspiring nation. Candidate status is the first step towards full membership of the European Union. We have decided to grant candidate status to Ukraine and Moldova, and we are ready to grant candidate status to Georgia once priorities will be addressed. This is a very defining moment and a very good day for Europe today. Um, I warmly congratulate President Zelensky, President Sandu, President Zurabishvili, all three countries are part of our European family. We've never let any doubt about that. European leaders talk about a historic decision. Yesterday, 27 countries decided on the EU perspective of Kiev, which applied for EU membership, four days after Russia's attack on Ukraine. I think this is the moment that begins a new history of a Europe without divisions, without gray zones, a Europe that is truly united, that is able to include its values for its future. Poland is the most important advocate of Ukrainian European aspirations. Poland stands shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine in this fight for freedom and sovereignty, fighting against the barbaric and brutal aggression of Russia. Even though the European elite now talks about Ukraine as part of the European family, in March, just after the Russian aggression, they were reluctant to open the door to Ukraine. Such a message came from Germany and France, among others. Ukrainians simply prove their determination every day with their courage that they are a European nation, that they are able to pay the highest price to be able to integrate with the West. However, candidate status is only the beginning of a long road to full membership. Apart from Ukraine, Moldova also received it, thus joining the group of five countries with this status. Turkey is the longest waiting country so far, since 1999. However, it still has not carried out the necessary reforms. Granting candidate status to a given country that applies for EU membership is a political statement that marks the beginning of a very long road, which may or may not end with EU membership. Ukrainian membership in the EU is beneficial for Poland, as it will enable it to create a permanent and strong buffer against Russia. Publicist Rafał Zimkiewicz points out that possible accession will strengthen the national communities in Europe. That is why the Germans did not want it very much, and the French because the prospect of accepting new members dismissed the prospect of federalization. Yesterday's decision is an expression of the unity of European states in the face of Russian aggression, and it declares a direction in which the European Union will follow. Time will show how much the promise of European leaders is worth. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful weekend.